right, continuing on with the APES Mathematic Review, starting at number 23. So metric area conversions. This is a reminder, remember you have to first take it out of area by simplifying and then convert and multiply. So we're going to take, um, we are going to convert 5 kilometers squared to meters squared. So first I got to simplify it. And so 5 kilometers squared is equal to 5 kilometers times 1 kilometer. Then I'm going to convert to meters. And so um, there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. Um, so this is equal to 5,000 meters times, and then this again, there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So 5,000 meters times a thousand meters. And when I multiply this out, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm going to count my zeros here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 5 million, and meters times meters is meters squared. And so I can leave it like this if on an FRQ or in a multiple choice, they'll have it simplified to 5 times 10 to the 6 meters squared. So either one of these is correct. 24, calculate the area in centimeters of a table. That's 2 meters. So first, again, take out of meters squared. So I'm going to simplify it to 2 meters times 1 meter. Then I'm going to um, convert. And in centimeters, centimeters is 10 to the negative second. So I've got to move my decimal two places. And since centimeters is smaller than meters, I've got to move it uh, to make a bigger number. And so this is going to be 200 centimeters. This is equal to 200 centimeters times 100 centimeters. Think about a meter stick. There's 100 centimeters in a meter stick. Now I can multiply, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So 2 and one, two, three, four zeros. And it's going to be centimeters squared because I multiplied centimeter by centimeter. And so this is my answer, but I can also put it in scientific notation at two times 10 to the fourth centimeter squared. On an FRQ, they would accept either one of these. On a multiple choice, they will probably have one of the answers be in the scientific notation. So you got to be able to recognize that these are the same answer. 25, a shopping center's parking lot is 200 meters long and 100 meters wide. How many kilometers squared is this? So we've got to change it to kilometers first. So it tells us that we have 200 meters and times 100 meters. So first let's um, don't don't multiply yet. First, we need to convert. So um, to go from meters to kilometers, kilometers is 10 to the negative 3, so I need to move it 3 decimals. And since kilometers is a larger unit, I need to make a smaller number. So 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. So this is equal to 0.2 kilometers times 0.1 kilometer. And I, when I multiply this together, 2 times 1 is 2. But whenever you multiply with decimals, you've got to count in both how many decimals. So there's 1 here and 1 here. And so that's 2 decimal points I've got to move over. 1, 2. So I'm going to fill that in with a 0. And so my answer is going to be 0.2 kilometers squared, because I multiply kilometer and kilometer, um, or it's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative second kilometer squared. And again, on an FRQ, either one will give you the point, but on a multiple choice, they often have it reduced for you. So you have to be able to recognize both of them. Now we're going on to half-life. 
A sample of radioactive waste has a half-life of 10 years and an activity level of 2 curies. How many years will the activity level of the sample be 0.25 curie? Even if you don't know what curry means, you can still solve this problem. A curry is a measure of radiation. It's a radiation unit. It was actually named after um, Marie Curie, one of the female French scientists who discovered a lot of radioactive properties and elements. All right, so um, we start out with two curies, and it says in a half-life, it's going to be half. So half of two is one, and that's one half-life, and so that's uh, 10 years here. And then it's going to go again by half to 0.5 in another 10 years. And then half again to 0.25 in another 10 years. So 10 times 10, or 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 30 years. 27, a sample, a 64 gram sample of germanium 66 is left undisturbed for 12.5 hours. At the end of that period, only two grams remain. What's the half-life? All right, so we're going to start off with 64 grams. And in a half-life, it's going to go to 32. And another half-life, it's going to go to 16. We're going to try and get all the way down to 2 here. And then it's going to half to 8. And then to 4. And to 2. Okay, so now we're at 2. So how many half-lives was that? So that's 1, 2, 3 three, four half-lives. And it said that occurred in 12.5 hours. So we're going to take 12.5. We're going to divide it by five times. And when we do that math, we are going to find out that it's 2.5. And this is hours, not years, so be careful. 2.5 hours. So the next um, problem, number 28, has productivity calculations. You should know this. Gross primary production minus respiration is equal to net primary production. So going to number 28. Number 28. The gross primary productivity of an ecosystem is 3.5 kilogram calories meters per meter squared per year, and the energy needed for their own respiration. Remember, a producer is uh, something that photosynthesizes. So producers do mostly photosynthesis, but they also do cellular respiration. They do both. However, consumers, animals like us and bacteria and fungi, um, they, we only do cellular respiration, and we just uh, call it respiration. What's the net primary productivity of such an ecosystem? So this one just fits in. It says the GPP is here, so 3.5, and it says the respiration is 3, and so we can just subtract and get 0 0.5, and then on an FRQ, make sure that you always have your units. On a multiple choice, the units will be one of the choices, or it will be attached to the choices. 29, so now we just use the formula. So <clears throat> GPP minus, um, well, first of all, it tells us the NPP is 2,000, and the respiration is 18,000. So it's what we want to know the GPP. So GPP minus respiration is 18,000. Now, um, on an FRQ, make sure you always put the units in your work, too, um, and in your answer. It's kind of annoying, but the units are important. On an FRQ, um, when you do the scratch math, that's not necessary. All right, so now we can just solve. Um, so we can kind of do this one in our head, and that's okay. As long as you write out the problem on an FRQ, then you can do the solution in your head. 
And so the solution, uh, we just can kind of figure out that it's 20,000 because 20,000 minus 18,000 is 2,000. Or we can just do this like this. And our answer is 20,000. Let me get in our units. Kilocalories per meter squared per year. All right. So those ones are pretty easy. This one is, uh, I gave you those questions just to remind you of productivity. So the next one <clears throat> has you look at a chart and it's a multiple choice question. So we have all of these givens, our trophic level, we have a producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer. And <clears throat> this 10 right here kind of came where it should be right here. And then the 40 should be here. And then the 100. Sometimes when these documents upload to my um, Explain Everything app, they don't do it correctly. So it's telling us here that the producer, uh, we're not really concerned about the waste energy or the energy consumed at this point. Um, for this question, it says in the community described in the table above, which of the following represents respiratory energy? So GPP minus respiration gives us energy. So this question is testing to know if you know that an autotroph is the same thing as a producer. So they are synonyms. <coughs> so if we take GPP minus respiration, it's going to give us NPP. And so that answer is 2,000, so the answer is D. So 10,000 minus 8,000 gives us 2,000. So now we need <clears throat> this table here. And uh, based on the table above, calculate the efficiency of energy transfer. So we know on average 10% gets transferred from one trophic level to another. So 90% is lost, but that's an average, it's not an absolute. So sometimes it's higher or lower than that. So we want to know from producers to primary consumers. So our producers here are at 9,000 and our primary consumers are at 18,000. So we're going to take 18, I'm sorry, 1,800, not 1,000, divided by 9,000. And so we can cross out two zeros here and two zeros here. And now we have 90 going into 18. Put our decimal places, uh, add a zero. Oh, it goes in twice perfectly. And so if we're going to change this to a percentage, we can move the decimal once, twice, or multiply by 100. And then we get 20%. So that's our energy transfer. So it's actually higher than the 10% average. Now, if you can't remember which way to multiply, if you did it the other way, so let's say you had 9,000, um, I'm sorry, which way to divide. If you did it this way, you're going to end up with this enormous number that doesn't make any sense. Um, so 1,800 goes into 9,000 five times, and when you change that to a percentage, that equals 500%. And we know that energy is lost, not gained, so it can't go up in energy. So we know that this way is, is wrong. So look at your answers when you do math and see if they're reasonable, especially on an FRQ. And if they're not reasonable, you know that you did them wrong. Okay, and then secondary consumers to tertiary consumers. So secondary consumer is... 120 and then 12. So it's going to be 12 divided by 120. And we can just reduce this. We know that this is a tenth. So you can kind of look at it and um, you can see that. If not, you can go ahead and do the long division problem. Again, as long as I wrote it out like this, and even though I did this math in my head and this math in my head, as long as I write out the setup on an FRQ, then you're fine. You can't just do the setup in your head and answer in your head. You have to show the setup for points. <clears throat>